Yeehaw! It's Nick's wild history of Hollywood's West. Based on the Japanese classic, The Seven Samurai, The Magnificent Seven is a film is unique in a way that only classics can be. It's the classic story of a villain, played by Eli Wallach, trying to boss a town around into giving him food and shelter. The townspeople get mad with him and go into America to find some gunslingers who can help them out. They bring seven of them back, and not only do they intimidate the villain, but they teach the townspeople how to defend themselves. It has lots of action and adventure, sure, but it also has a theme of deconstructing the myth of the gunfighters, showing who these people are beneath their bravado. One of my favorite scenes is this one here. Our fathers are cowards. Don't you ever say that again about your fathers because they are not cowards. You think I am brave because I carry a gun? Well, your fathers are much braver because they carry responsibility for you, your brothers, your sisters, and your mothers. And this responsibility is like a big rock that weighs a ton. It bends and it twists them until finally it buries them under the ground. And as nobody says they have to do this, they do it because they love you and because they want to. I have never had this kind of courage. It shows the gunfighters as scared men running away from the so-called civilized life, putting up their barriers of guns and glory to avoid settling down. To mirror this, the villain isn't truly evil, just a leader trying to look out for his men. He feels a responsibility to them and doesn't want to let them starve. I can't say how true any of this is because I've never known any gunfighters, but I think it's an interesting commentary on the nature of a so-called hero and why they do what they do. It casts the West in shades of gray, somewhat different from the old white hat, black hat motifs. Of I kind of view this as the transition movie, from the old clean-cut westerns to the grittier and more anti-heroic westerns later, especially given its cast. It has several old stars like Yul Brynner and Steve McQueen, and some up-and-comers who went on to fame and fortune, like Eli Wallach, Charles Bronson, and James Coburn. It was actually followed by several sequels, which I've never seen them on the principle that the original film was all I needed. I know I keep pushing it, but there's really no other way to describe this film, except magnificent.